Thanks, Kate. Um, good evening and good morning, wherever you are. It's great to meet you all. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about models of rehabilitation. And, um, and I thought I should start by, you know, defining what I mean by rehabilitation. We had uh, wonderful sessions last week and um, um, just now with the Sue's presentation and other presenters following my presentation, we talk about rehabilitation as something that um, is commonly understood and used consistently. But in fact, um, the reality is uh, far from the consistency. So I used rehabilitation in this presentation in the book chapter that I have got as a set of interventions needed when a person is experiencing or is likely to experience limitations in everyday functioning due to aging or health condition, including chronic diseases or disorders, injuries or traumas. So it's extremely broad, but it's important. Therefore, the, you know, rehabilitation is actually applied to, to everyone who has limited um, you know, everyday functioning. So it's not just for those people with um, trauma or stroke um, that is commonly known to us. Now, um, just hold on a second. So um, rehabilitation usually focuses on person-centeredness um, and the person's functional independence, not just the disease itself, through the measures of preventing and slowing down their loss of function, or it's for the decline, improving, restoring, and maintaining function, and compensating for lost function. So it's not necessarily always about that we're going to help the person regain function before the point of illness or a trauma, but it also is about you know, um, helping them to have their function by compensating for their loss of function. Um, in, in writing of this chapter that I have really you know, understood how variety um, the definitions or terms are, but you know, regardless of how they are called, um, you know, we, heard of, we hear about um, rehabilitation, rehabilitation, um, restorative care, all these different names. Um, but what's consistent is that it's about improving um, you know, everyday function. And also what is important is that when we talk about function, we're not just talking about physical function. We are talking about social, physical, psychological, and the communicative function, all of those. So um, rehabilitation can be delivered in different shapes and forms and settings. Um, but I have divided rehabilitation pro, you know, um, interventions largely in two categories. So single therapy interventions, we hear about exercise, um, physical activity we heard last week, and cognitive stimulation, reminiscence, speech therapy, or specific aspect of function. Whereas, um, you know, second category of rehabilitation includes multidisciplinary or specialist-led community programs or multimodal rehabilitation programs, or sometimes it's called the function-focused care or restorative care and cognitive rehabilitation programs. And they, are, they are always address the broad aspects of function, not just one aspect of function. So in this presentation, um, I'm going to focus on the second aspect or category of rehabilitation. Now, before I talk about what we have found in our um, review, I just want to you know, um, bring your attention to this um, definition of healthy aging. Um, as you can see, healthy aging is as the process of developing and maintaining the functional ability that enables well-being in older people you can see the striking resemblance between this definition and rehabilitation in many ways. Um, and also, you know, um, when I talk about functional ability here is, is about moving around, building and maintaining relationships. So it's not just about physical mobility, it's about social relationships as well, meeting their own basic needs, learning, growing and making decisions and contributing. 
So this is the kind of range of functional ability that we talk about. But this is my favorite figure that I have um, found from this um, the WHO's report and really highlights that, you know, the importance of the person environment fit when we talk about rehabilitation, because um, when we, you know, the goal of rehabilitation is to help the person to maintain independence. So the functional ability is around here in darker blue. But what's inside the cell is intrinsic capacity, which is made up of genetic inheritance, but health characteristics and personal characteristics. So, you know, um, dementia, the, the actual conditions could be part of these health characteristics. So it's not just dementia that affects individuals' functional ability. It's all those above, plus the environment they're surrounded by. That's all made up when we actually, you know, have to address rehabilitation. So rehabilitation really emphasizes the importance of holistic approach. And uh, although the individual rehabilitation intervention that is targeted specific function is effective, when we want to you know, maintain overall health, we really need to think of this holistic approach. So next definition that I wanna draw your attention to is the definition of health. So if you, you know, remember WHO's health is, you know, the complete status of, you know, health, um, physical, social, and mental health. And that means that, you know, no one is actually healthy in, in a way because um, there is, it's, health is not a status, it's a process. So a more recent definition advocated by a group of, you know, um, clinicians and academics is that it's a dynamic balance between opportunities and limitations. And it's actually about the individual's ability to adapt and to self-manage despite the challenges that they have, whether that's a life challenge or health challenge. So the, the social health really emphasizes that it is about individual's capacity to fulfill potential and obligations. It's their ability to manage life with some degree of independence despite a medical condition and ability to participate in social activities, including work. So this really gives us opportunity to think, you know, having diagnosis of dementia doesn't exclude people from being healthy. There are ways that we can support people to actually live well with dementia. So now I'm going to have a few slides about the actual findings. So we uh, reviewed, um, you know, programs um, that are specifically designed for um, rehabilitation in dementia. And we found 28 um, specific programs uh, delivered and evaluated as a home-based, institution-based, they could be hospital institution or aged care institution or clinic center-based. And we found most of the programs are offered home-based. And we also found that, uh, that those programs target mild to moderate stages of dementia living at home and the commonly undertaken individually in participants' homes with the care partners input. So there are a few programs that are group based, but by and large, um, individually based approaches seem to be more effective or have more success rates. The duration, so those and, uh, you know, um, duration so vary, four hours to 234 hours. The 234 hours um, was an, a program offered in Italy and evaluated, and um, they offered over two years, and often they, you know, six to 90, uh, 60 to 90 minutes per session. And also, as you, you know, anticipate, uh, most of the programs delivered by occupational therapists, and seven of those 28 programs we reviewed, they are called cognitive rehabilitation, and a lot of them are you know, delivered by psychologists, and either alone or with other healthcare professionals, such as nurses and um, other allied health professionals or doctors. So um, what we found was that 17 out of 28 um, reported a significant post-intervention improvement in their in, um, functional independence. But, um, but the, the issue is that we couldn't find any definitive answer for the types of programs 
and largely because the characteristics of programs so vary, it's hard to find the patterns. And that's actually quite consistent issue when we try to make some definitive um, conclusion about is rehabilitation effective or not? Because the, the programs offered are so different, um, which doesn't mean it's bad, it, because often they are tailored to individual situations in particular context. Um, this, but what we found was, you know, individually administered approach is most effective and also the mild to moderate is more effective than, um, you know, offered to those with the severe um, dementia. Now, over two thirds of the programs engage care partners and, um, you know, I guess that was, we, we thought that's a more kind of a factor that contribute to the success of the program, but again, it's not conclusive. Um, what's an adequate program, dose and duration? Um, it's really complex to, to actually say what's enough. And, um, but, you know, when we looked at the overall 28 programs, um, I guess about two, three to four months in duration, um, with or without further maintenance, and about 15 to 22 hours of those appear to be adequate. Um, but I guess this very much depends on the person's baseline health status. So, you know, if you remember what Sue presented about comorbidities, these things have significant influence in the, the outcome of the person. Sometimes people need more time to recover from those comorbidities. So it's, it's really hard to say, but what is important is that personalized and need for flexibility is quite important. And um, key principles, and I think as I've already in, you know, indicated, it has to be person-centered, but the second point is really imbo important, conducting comprehensive assessment of the person within their environment. That's really important to have the person to be able to you know, um, carry out their everyday activities, um, and then they can continue to you know, um, function better in their home environment. And um, assessment of functional ability is uh, sometimes not very easy. Um, and there are a number of tools, and this is one of the reasons why we may have some conflicting results, because the tools are not necessarily capturing the individual's level of dependency or um, you know, independence. And also, you know, there was only one study, a um, couple of studies talking about the training of the, the people who deliver the intervention, which is quite crucial in the success of the outcome. So, you know, we've seen these, you know, um, programs that um, showed quite successful outcomes, but then, um, you know, do we see them outside the research environment? Perhaps not. <laughs> it's not day-to-day -day regular kind of service you see in you know, a dementia rehabilitation, and a lot of clinicians would say that it's a foreign terminology to them. Um, that's kind of, I don't think it's just in Australia. And, um, and this is where models of care comes in because um, this is the definition that I found from our New South Wales, um, um, you know, um, the, the, the health department um, booklet. And it says that model of care is multidimensional and refers to overarching health service design within a broad health systems context. It consists of roles and structures and care management and referral processes. Thanks, what Lipe. I'll just give you a, a time warning if you can just wrap up your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, so if you think of, you know, what happens, um, you know, when someone has dementia, they don't always go to hospital for treatment. They may see a geriatrician in the hospital, but the referral process for rehabilitation is not always consistent. So what's important is to be able to make sure that appropriate care setting is determined based on the person's needs and their functional capacity and health conditions and the service accessibility. So this is the kind of a diagram that shows the importance of if we want to introduce any one of those programs as a part of our routine health care, these are the things that we have to consider. We can't just plug a program into the healthcare system or aged care system, expect it to work. So we need to think about the leadership and workforce, all these other things to be part of the planning. So that's something that takes a lot longer than people wish for, and but important part of the process. 
So I just want to wrap up with, a, you know, that there is some hope that there is work that's going on by WHO in terms of, you know, focusing on rehabilitation and what they are trying to do is the rehabilitation is part of the universal health coverage. So health promotion, prevention, treatment, rehabilitation and palliative care, everyone should have access to that. That's their rehabilitation 2030 call for action. And dementia is one of the 12 20 health conditions to be included in a package of rehabilitation interventions. So that's where I um, end. And thank you, my apologies for the longer presentation.